Right. Okay. So, assalamualaikum and a very good evening to everyone. Uh, I am Nur Sabiha from Faculty of Pharmacy. So, I hope everyone has had your lunch and is doing okay and all freshened up for this webinar, webinar session. For those who join us in this series of micro learning webinars, thank you so much. And also, thank you to those who are joining us for today. So, I hope everyone is ready for the session. So today's webinar topic is Beyond the Four Walls and how to design an interactive session. Uh, this includes tips, strategies, and toolkits for a large classroom facilitation. So in this session, you learn how to grab your students' attention and also increase and sustain their engagement during your lecture and have less of quick, quick moments, all right? So before that, I'm going to introduce the speaker for today. So she is Dr. Aisha Saad, who is Associate Professor in Pharmaceutical Chemistry at the Faculty of Pharmacy UITM. She is a registered pharmacist and previously received her PhD in Pharmaceutical Chemistry from University of Nottingham. She had experience of working in the hospital and retail pharmacies uh, which includes Watson personal care stores. She also has outstanding experience in academia, such as a keynote speaker and a lead trainer at national and international workshops on MOOCs, technology in education and presentation skills. She also authored a book known as Elevate, which focused on the academic presentation. Uh, this book this book uh, was selected for Dana Penulis by Perpustaka and Negara Malaysia. So this is quite a big achievement for uh, Dr. Aisha Saad. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Aisha Saad to start delivering her talk. Uh, and I would like to also remind everyone to mute your microphone and feel free to ask any question in the chat box here. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you Puan Sabiha for the kind introduction. Uh, Assalamualaikum everyone. Um, let me see whether you can... Okay, can you all see my screen? Can you all see my screen in uh, just... Um, click, uh, Puan? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much um, for the kind introduction. Um, thank you, uh, everyone, for making the time uh, for being uh, well being in the session. Uh, here, I think you can see that I have two things. Uh, it may look a little bit different, or you know, not connected. But as much as possible, I'll try to connect because, in a sense, going beyond the four walls, that is a MOOC, is about um, you know teaching and uh, teaching large classroom is, is huge, it's massive open online courses. So, um, so in here, the first part, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, okay, fantastic, I think I see, you can see, all right, fantastic. So you can see that um, what I'm going to share with you in this, uh, the in the first part is my journey from a Secret Garden to MOOC and also its spin-off. I think you have if you have followed from the first webinar, you actually see Dr. Prof. Karim's um, sharing, uh, you know, and his call to action to all of you was to, you know, uh, step out of the physical boundary and into the open, uh, open uh, education. Yeah, and and um, also why uh, I would also, you know, talk about why you should. Uh, and maybe, uh, maybe also why you should not produce a MOOC as well. So, um, but I think I'm, you know, I'm a bit biased. So maybe I'll talk a little bit more on why you should produce a MOOC. Yeah? And the um, second one, second of this session, I'll be talking about um, how to design an interactive session. And I think this is very um, useful when you want to start uh, your next session, your next semester, uh, uh, the ODL, or maybe some of you actually will go into BL learning and also maybe hybrid learning as well. 
So how to make a session interactive? Uh, especially my focus now is on a large class. Uh, there's no definitive definition on a large class. Yeah, it could be, I think, I just put a number, maybe something like more than 80 around that and, and more. And how to make a huge class really interactive in a sense and grab your students' attention, sustain it. That's important. Uh, and have less of these creep, creep moments, it's like, you know, the really quiet moment that you would you would say, OK, you know, sometimes I think as a as a as a lecturer, you might actually feel a little upset uh, of the if, you, if students actually don't answer your question. Uh, it is a very awkward uh, situation. So I will share some tips and strategies where you can have less of that creep, creep moments. Yeah? And if time permits, I will share maybe one or two. Sh just show you how to um, use one or two apps for your uh, for your uh, to make your session more interactive. Okay, um, let me just go on to the next one. All right. Okay. So I'm actually now. Um, let me just go to here. All right. Um, what we can gonna do? We're going to actually recall some of what we have learned in the last three weeks. Um, do you want to do that? Just say, just put something on the chat if you want to do that. Are you game enough? Yeah. We're going to recap um, a bit of Prokarim's uh, sharing, uh, Dr. Suraya, Dr. Nobiha, um, Social Professor uh, Dr. Chu, Dr. Hanis, and I think myself, I think, uh, yeah, only five, not, not more than that. Can you, are you, are you okay? Recap would be great. Okay, cool. Okay. We'll do a recap, okay, by playing a game. Uh, we're going to do, if you actually uh, can join, uh, just write down, just open a new tab, if you can. And key in bit.ly, bit dot L Y slash eleven zero three twenty one, which is today's date, and enter micro. Are you with me on this? Just uh, just put on the chat if you are already on the screen. You can see um, this beautiful beach side with. Uh, uh, some she uh, she sell shush. my English is my my uh, pronunciation is a bit uh, off a bit uh, this afternoon but uh, some uh, seashells and uh, the title of this adventure is Inca's adventure uh, escape from Amantani can you all join this uh, again if you just uh, join uh, you can go to bitly slash eleven zero three twenty one micro are you all okay? Uh, can you join? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Sabiha. Just click on the link that Puan Sabiha just uh, shared. And now I'm going to go, I'm just going to brief you a little uh, about your task, about your mission. Okay, so um, this is Inca. Inca, his plane crash. Uh, you know, recently into this island called Amantani, and it's somewhere in the huge lake Titicaca. Yeah, and uh, to those who just joined, uh, you can join the uh, this escape room, this deserted island, uh, by going to bit.ly slash 110321 micro. Yeah, and then, uh, and he's a software survivor. Uh, of the plane crash. Uh, so he's uh, running out of food and he wants to actually uh, make a raft to escape. Yeah. So what do I need? What does he need? In Inca needs food to survive, obviously, uh, some ropes, an axe, and a torchlight. Yeah. Um, so what you have learned so far in the last three weeks would be helpful to unlock the provisions that he need to do, you know, uh, 
to complete to accomplish this mission he needs to escape from this uh, deserted island he cannot bear to live there anymore yeah so what uh, you need to do just go through um you have about 10 minutes around that and uh, what you do you just click on this circle and you'll be taking on to the next uh you know your your pit stop this entire mission alive would have i think one two three four five five pit stops so to go to the next one that's inca if you go to the next one the first pit stop you need to just click on this circle okay uh puan sabiha can you please uh, share the link again and then you can you just read a little, a little bit of this brief and then you can head to the first task yeah so i'll um, see you uh, at the end hopefully you will help inka to escape this uh, deserted island if you have any problem uh, please please put that down in the uh, chat box yeah if you're stuck in the um, you can also you can also i think uh, let me just see you can also uh, switch on the the uh, the sound if that is helpful during this afternoon it's going to rain as well so maybe it makes things a bit little a bit a little bit more exciting yeah so yeah or if you find that distracting you can turn it, turn it off at the bottom okay so enjoy those who just joined you can join this here uh let me go back to the first page of this escape room those who just joined uh can you can then join at this particular link yeah so you can just simply go to bit.ly slash 11.03.21 and just follow the circle and you have i think less than 10 minutes now to to complete the task i'll be monitoring your activity from behind the screen as well How is you all of you doing? Yeah, I think uh, by now you should be coming to the middle of the island or halfway through your. Oh, still doing okay, okay. Uh, so, or somewhere halfway through your um, your mission. I think uh, yeah. By now, I think you should come to the forest or the shrubbery. Okay. If you do have any, uh, you know, any trouble, uh, you're not too familiar, let me know uh, what's the what's the problem. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we have the first, the first is a winner. Eh? Uh, Mash, Mashani. Mashani. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I didn't get the code. Fantastic. The code you need to use, you need to take the uh, flashlight. And drag it over to the uh, to the backpack, and the flashlight will help to shine through. Yes, use the torchlight. Thank you, Mashini. You will just drag the torchlight over to the black area, and it will show the. You need to find, look into your, you know, dig out, look look into your backpack, and and then see uh, where where's the code. Survived is that okay? Oh, there's more coming. Fantastic. Is that the Dan checked in? Um, Dr. Mahmati as well checked in. Great. So, you uh, those who uh, the first three they managed to help Inca to escape the 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 deserted the, the island. Good. You can always play again if you want to. Uh, perhaps you will be faster this time. Dr. Su just joined the meeting. Dr. Su, uh, if you just join the meeting, uh, you can uh, go to the escape room. Just go to bit.ly slash 11.03.21 micro. And then that will help you to, uh, you can then uh, help Inca to escape from this uh, really, really <laughs> dread dreadful Amantani. Uh, Hi, Dr. Aisha. Yeah, Sabiha. Hi. <laughs> no, Sabiha, it's Raya, sorry. <laughs> yes, just yes, please join. Please go yep, yep, into yep. The, the, uh, the island, onto the island and help Inca. Okay. 
Okay, so once we have managed to, okay, good, fantastic. Was it not, was it okay, was it, did you enjoy that escape room? You, it seems to be quite easy, isn't it? I should make it more challenging next time. How, how do you find uh, the Inca is alive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, Inca is alive. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so how do you find the this uh, escape room? Or maybe, yeah, yeah es escaping from the the island. We give, we give you another few minutes, then uh, I'll come back to my uh, presentation. We continue with the presentation. Okay, Hisham just uh, managed to help Ika inside Hisham and Zafira. Fantastic. Raf tak datang lagi. <laughs> uh, okay, yes, it is fun. Uh, that's the thing. Thank you. So, and it recap knowledge while helping Inca escape. So, with uh, the escape room, it, it, you can use it for other uh, function or other purposes that you want your students to. Um, actually uh, do. For example, uh, escape room for each of the pit stop you can convert that into, you can use it in PBL and then you sh use each of the pit stop convert that into triggers. So the triggers for the PBL can be used uh, in, uh, you know, in an escape room as well. So they have, for example, they have to figure out certain things before they can, uh, they can actually key in um, they perhaps collect, um, uh, you know, a letter and they have to, uh, you know, make a word of that. And then only with that word, you can, you know, um, uh, use that as key to enter a certain, certain <laughs> uh, a room or, you know, uh, or, uh, you go on to the next pit stop and so on. So why finally? Okay, good. Right. Which part do you... Great, thank you, Zafira. Which part do you think uh, is where you get stuck, more or less, that you need to figure out a bit? Oh, yeah. Mm, okay. I had, yeah. Remember, uh, remembering, the, remembering the map is actually one of the... Uh, I think we need to get familiar with the features on generally uh, and also the map, so only, only then you'll be able to uh, get the, the rough. Uh, and then uh, help Inka to, uh, you know, flee the island. Okay, I think, I think, um, all right, I think most of you, we have already like maybe like uh, 12 to 15 people. Okay, you can continue playing. You just need to uh, just uh, go play again or can you, you can actually just um, uh, restart everything or re, uh, refresh your brow browser you'll get back to this uh, particular uh, link again or this particular site. So I'm going to go to my, yes, I know, it's, it's, I was inspired. You, uh, I don't know whether you remember, I actually was, um, uh, I, I saw Kiman's, uh, yeah, Chua Kiman's uh, escape room. So that gave me also an idea to, to do it for this session. So enjoy, uh, refresh it if you want to play again. And uh, okay, so I'll see you back in the in the presentation. Yeah. Okay, I need to switch. Sorry, I need to switch off the. the... Okay. Okay, okay. So um, you've done the recap more or less uh, using the escape room. Uh, of course, you can use it. Uh, it doesn't have to be. You can actually redesign that uh, in in different scenarios. You can use it for quiz. You can use it for PBL. You can use it for case based study. Uh, I think almost anything that you think uh, it would be uh, fun for the student. Eh? Just don't overdo it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll go on to the next one. Right. So I think in the last um, three weeks you have um, seen in general the big overall view of uh, on MOOC yeah, and so on. So now what I'm going to share with you is about my journey uh, from um, classroom, yeah, from my secret classroom to, to MOOC, all right? Um, 
this is more like a ground level sharing and um I, I like to think the thing in a sense that uh, I, I know you know you, you need to think that you are the expert in teaching your own subject. So if you feel some tips are useful, just note it down. If you don't don't think it's useful, just note it, note it down as well. Maybe you find it useful later. Yeah. So um, why I also share this this one about going beyond the four walls is because uh, my my role as an e learning coordinator in overlooking uh, MOOC. Um, the running of the planning of the MOOC and MOOC uh, as well in the faculty. So let me just share with you um, the whole journey to to producing a MOOC. Yeah. All right. So my I, when I came back uh, from my PhD, I teach my undergrad students and I encounter problems. Yeah. Uh, that they fall asleep in my class. That was the first uh, challenge for me. I think. Um, and uh, what happened was that, um, and I think, I think at that time, I thought was because of my slides. Uh, my slides are very texty, if you can see from, from there. So, and I used to just read straight away from, from the slide, line by line, and you can see how, how useful it is as a drug. Yeah? It's really put my students actually um, on, the, on the overdose, I think I would say, uh, sleeping pills. Have to say, so um, what I then later I it took me some, uh, quite a while, uh, but what I did later is I basically transform my text slide to something more visual. Yeah, uh, so instead of this text, I changed the title slide to be uh, like the, a close up of a, 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 a rose, and the rest I really keep it really minimal uh, and so on. And I realized that when I actually see my students, they, uh, they, it, it kept them awake. They were engaged, uh, I would say. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, quickly, yeah, very quickly. So uh, if you really want to uh, become a, a great presenter, I would suggest that you look up this book, Presentation Zen, uh, highly recommended. Um, and it also features my slides in there. And um, some tips for you if you want to uh, present better or more effective, to, to deliver more effective academic presentation, just on the slide design, make sure that it's, the slide design is visual. Just be bold. Don't worry about what other people say, in a sense. And second, that make sure that there's, there's contrast. If you, see, if you see my slide here, uh, between the um, the blue and the, the yellow one is actually this, you can see straight away that uh, the, the, the code, you know, creativity takes courage. That's that's quite, you know, uh, quite conspicuous of, you know, is really uh, stand out. But if you, if I actually zoom down to the bottom here, you can see only then you can see the, um, my, my name and so on. Yeah. So this is an example of lack of contrast. So um, to make your message or to make your statement stands out, make sure that you have a good contrast between the text and the background. That is just one tip. And last but not least, make sure that you also uh, practice uh, this, this acronym KISS. Keep it sweet and simple. Just make sure that things are keep it, uh, kept uh, uh, really uh, sweet and simple. Yeah. So that's there. So that's my presentation uh, where I, tr I thought at that time by changing my presentation, I would help students engage better. That was the idea. And then second one, uh, I faced a problem with my students who had this misconception that penicillin is flat, uh, like what they see here, just a simple flat. So um, I tried to um, actually show um, this 3D penicillin for my students, uh, but still, my students actually uh, experienced really um, a problem. And at that time, I don't have I don't have this model. Well, they do, but it's really expensive to buy, say, a model for a large classroom. Um, maybe cost about thirty dollars times hundred is about. Uh, I think you can do the math. Yeah, it's really expensive. Um, 
So uh, I thought about that and I found the quote by Feynman, one of my idol. Um, you see that the problem in chemistry and biology can be greatly helped if our ability to see what we are doing. So we need to actually see and observe and to do things on an atomic level is ultimately develop, um, is, yeah, basically developed in a sense. Yeah? And I think it cannot be avoided. So then I thought, how can I show my students penicillin, you know, the penicillin in their hands, in a sense. So then, um, so after that, what I did, I remember that I used when, during my PhD, I used to work with balloons in the fume hood, uh, really nice, colorful balloons. So that gave me an idea. And I did uh, this uh, activity with my class, entire students, uh, in a sense, sculpting balloons into penicillin uh, model. It's not a complete model, but it gives a framework for students to actually uh, just um, simply, um, you know, um, have an idea of what, how penicillin looked like in their hands, that's the main idea. Um, that's with the rest of other uh, students as well. Uh, and I think they had fun, all right? So I suggest if you're interested uh, to learn more, you can uh, learn, you can, there's a book that I'd like to recommend here by Richard Feynman. He's a physicist and he, I think uh, what I like from his adventure as a physicist is that um, he had fun throughout his research career and he's one of the best teachers as well. Um, so, yeah, that book is highly recommended as well. And um, as mentioned earlier, I have a book and I wrote about my experience. Uh, the title is um, Presenting the Wind. Yeah? And it's my experience presenting uh, for their teaching awards. And I brought my balloons there and I think they had fun. And um, I won in a sense. Yeah. So, Okay, so I'm going to move on uh, to the next one. Um, all right, so that's the problem I sort of, I think I solve in the classroom. All right, so I have two more here before I go to MOOC, which is actually teaching strategies and teaching with tech. And I will then share with you after you share your thoughts on the chat, in the chat box about MOOC. I wonder, yeah. Um, do you know what is in for you uh, if you actually produce a MOOC? Can you write in the chat box what would you gain if you um, produce a MOOC? Sharing knowledge, okay. Thank you. Her name. This is exactly what happens in a in an online class, isn't it? When you ask a question uh, to your students and everyone is quiet. Uh, okay, not really any. Seems like MOOC is compulsory for us to do. Okay, that's that's fine. Yep, flexible learning. That's yep, that's true. Yeah, we can help actually use your MOOC uh, in uh, doing or delivering learning that is flexible for your students. And also don't think it's only for your students. When you uh, have content already, uh, actually um, you will benefit more than your students, to be honest, yeah? It's a secret that no one actually tell you, uh, I think. Um, okay. <laughs> you don't like, okay. Career investment, okay. A huge career investment in what sense? Um, okay, I think I'll, I'll just, you did, okay, okay, I think you can keep on, uh, you know, uh, uh, give the comments, I'll just go on to the next one. So, before I talk about this, I'll jump straight into uh, producing a MOOC. So, my first MOOC is on, uh, is that presentation. I honestly was thinking not so much on the academic course, because at that time, um, the CTM, the credit transfer mechanism, uh, is not yet in place for MOOC Malaysia. So um, what happened was I thought, might as well actually make a MOOC out of uh, my training courses and one of them is present on presentation. So that was that, yeah. And what happened, what happened when I produced a MOOC? 
uh, about a few months later, I was invited to join an EU um, funded uh, MOOC for single mothers um, as, as a co-researcher, as a course developer and coordinator as well. I think it's a, one of the golden opportunities where I think I get to work with a lot of um, researchers from uh, different disciplines. It's a transdisciplinary uh, research. Um, and also with B40 and computer scientists, social scientists as well. And that, that reminds me of the word by uh, Professor Muhammad Yunus, the Nobel Peace Laureate, that uh, the village became my university. It's where he learned a lot more from the village than he learned from the university, as an academic in the university. Yeah? So that, that teach me a lot of, of things. Yeah? Um, okay, make it flexible to public. All right. Okay, I'll keep, keep them coming in sense. Okay, um, you can see there are five on the side, which is in purple. Also five on the side in, 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 in uh, pink. The purple one um, is the, uh, what you gain as a UTM, UITM, sorry, UITM lecturers. Uh, let me share what you gain if you produce a MOOC. Yeah? Um, you would, a MOOC will be considered as a teaching and learning innovation. It is also considered uh, if you actually enter the teaching competition, it'll, uh, it can be considered as an academic awards as well if you win. Usually you actually win in a sense. Yeah? You can also apply for copyright uh, you know, as an intellectual uh, property for your, for your work. Yeah? And the work is usually on the original videos that you have produced and the MOOC as a process. It's not as the MOOC itself, but as the entire process. It might be different from other MOOC. Yeah? And uh, the fourth one is, of course, somebody mentioned about flexible learning, blended learning as well. You can use that for your uh, students. And also it's a way for you to market yourself, market your expertise, the faculty and your ITM. Yeah? And also networking. I imagine that the students that is coming, especially from outside, will get to know how you teach. Yeah? Um, I think if you, mentioned, if you remember uh, Prokari mentioned uh, in the first, uh, uh, you know, the first uh, webinar that um, once MIT opens up the um the how uh, the videos assessment and so on people can see how um they teach and so on it's, it's like an explosion it's totally like people get to know mit they they um they able to in a sense market their their university not that they, uh, they are not great but they are greater in a sense yeah so um that's that as a faculty member um but what uh, for me, in a sense, I, this is not to, my intention here is to inspire you. Yeah, uh, what for me, I think, which I did not, if you asked me earlier around 2013, or even earlier when I came back my, for my, uh, my PhD, I never dreamed all this, actually. So first one would be my blog. Yeah? Uh, it's a blog to inspire you to, um, to make better presentation, uh, academic presentation. And then... Um, I also produce smaller, shorter courses uh, on micro credential. How is a tutorial on micro credential? And also more shorter courses. Uh, this is premium courses. And then um, I have a YouTube because sometimes when you share on the platform, a premium platform, it'll be usually they have some uh, rules that uh, I feel sometimes is probably a, a bit limiting. So um, those that I feel I want to actually share with the world, I'll share on my uh, YouTube channel. And also, um, I have a book out as well. And it's bought over by uh, PNM, National Library, uh, for circulation of, to all libraries in Malaysia. And I think, if I'm mistaken, you can get the book as well. You can borrow the book from uh, UITM Library. Yeah. Um, so, this is like if you actually produce a book, you can, in a sense, kill 10 birds with one stone. Yeah? And it's not just about the products, it's not just about the KPI, 
what you'd get in a sense once you have a MOOC. You can go on to the next level. Thank you. It's a nice book cover, yes. Um, and you get and you the skills that you gain from that, yeah, the skills that you gain from that is 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 more than what you need for 21st century um, you know, educator. All right. Um, so to to get here imitated imitated years, because usually once you have a MOOC, you would do a second one. That's usually the case. Or once you have a MOOC, you would then do short courses because you already have the skills, you're already familiar with things. Yeah. So um, okay, uh, at this point, I'm gonna move to the second part of the presentation. Do you have any question for me on the MOOC section? Yes, I have no experience in uh, using or doing a MOOC. You should actually attend one. Um, that would give you an idea what's what's the creative teaching out there. Yeah, um, MOOC is a main of marketing. It is a main of marketing. I agree. It's actually marketing at different levels for yourself, your expertise. You know, if you don't step out of the secret garden, how would people know about you? If you keep teaching to the same class every year, year in, year out, uh, for 10 years, yeah, you need to upgrade your skills, yeah, if possible. If you if that's what you want to do, I, I there's no, I would say there's no force. We're not forcing you, but if you feel that you're stagnant and you want to upgrade yourself, um, and you want the you know doors of opportunity to actually open for you because of your skills. I think that would be a great uh, developing a MOOC, producing a MOOC is a great um, is a great way to to upgrade your skills as a lecturer in the twenty first century. What would be your uh, advice for lecturers who wants to start? The first thing that the beginner needs to do, um, you okay? For a MOOC, to be honest, a sh let me share a shortcut. Uh, you, if you have done your ODL, yeah, you already you could already have a MOOC. You already started up to have a MOOC because usually what dominates in the MOOC is a video, all right. Uh, the next thing what you could think of is doing the activities. I think that would actually be uh, be very helpful. Yeah. Okay, and I think you already have a video. Then it, things will be much simpler. Uh, okay, let's. Is there any question before I go on to the next part? Nope. Okay. Right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Right. So let's come to this with teaching strategies and teach with tech. Um, you know, when I, I've got this exposure, which I, th I thought is like a challenge to me, but I think it's not enough. In a sense, because I want to know more, how do I engage my students further? You know, a presentation, uh, activity in class, that's that's about it, you know, but I want to upgrade myself in a sense, my skills. So um, when I went to workshops uh, on teaching on educators, 21st century educators and so on, one of the things that I think is just struck me is this cartoon uh, where, you know, in a sense, you know, when at the end of the semester, I would always think, Okay, done. My job is done for the semester. I finished teaching and let's wish my class, you know, a happy holiday and so on. Uh, I never, at that point, never asked my students whether they are okay or not. That's, that's my, that was my problem before. I think it was, it was, I didn't think it was an issue, but that is the thing that I think stops me. Yeah. I never think that they are quite blur or confused. Never thought of that. I just kept lecturing. Yeah. Uh, the second one is again this cartoon that um, it's about a boy who told his friend that I taught Stripe how to whistle, and his friend went to the to the dog, to, uh, to the dog and said, "I don't hear him, I hear him whistling." And the guy said, "The, uh, the guy said, I did. I said I taught him. I did not say he learned it." So there are two different things in here. It's a, a coin with, you know, two sides of the same coin. And I think a lot of um, 
I have to say, um, you know, on reflection, um, in a sense, me before that, I never want to know uh, what happened in uh, my students' head. I just can continue, you know, talking and talking and so on. So and that was, I think that was it. I think that's really a turning point for me. Yeah. So I went on uh, to learn about how to teach better. Yeah. I explored, I experimented with my students, upskill as well, um, teaching skills. Teaching skills is actually have been researched very well. Many strategies have already proven to be, to, you know, with a small classroom, with a large classroom, what works, what doesn't work. So it's a matter of, uh, of us to go and, and find those um, uh, resources. Yeah? And uh, so from these multiple apps in the beginning, I learned to curate and narrow down to maybe about three to six apps that I really like for myself. It's a toolkit, a toolkit for me, yeah? Um, and it depends on the participants or students, uh, LO, and the content as well. So that's, that's that with, with uh, me. That's how, I, that's how I think in a sense, yeah? Okay, uh, if you do also want to join, uh, want to start a MOOC, uh, I just remember that one of the things you could do is this one. It's a tip that I did as well. Coming. Uh, I learned how to speak to camera from this uh, lady called Alexa, F Ale Alexa Fisher. Because when we become, we come back from PhD usually, we are, or we start to actually um, ask to teach, we just say, okay, you're gonna teach this particular uh, courses, or you become a tutor, and that's it. There's, there's very little uh, introduction or workshop on how you um, speak, for example. Uh, or how you conduct a class, for example. So I think this is a gap that I feel I, I wanted to um, address, that how do I talk to a camera? So this is one of the things I think we could, we could um, in a sense, do, uh, to just take up some courses uh, to, to improve our skills. And in that course, a, a really good tip that I learned is that um, you can take one of these sticky notes, yeah? You can draw a picture, a smiling picture, and you can stick it by the camera or, or by the uh, webcam. And every time you actually look at it, it becomes it become a, focus, a focal point. You look at it, and that will help you to smile in a sense, yeah? To address this, um, the camp, the, your students uh, online, or even uh, when you uh, do a video. Okay, right. Let's, uh, any question? All right, good. Okay, good. So you have a series of videos. I'm going to talk next uh, is, I'm going to talk about the interactive session. Uh, one takeaway from this webinar, yeah, the essence of um, students and the learning or uh, interactive session is uh, a strategy is uh, this quote by Confucius is I hear I forget I see I remember I do and I understand sometimes you see it as I involve I get involved I understand that's the key to any SEL activity yeah if you if as a lecturer if you keep lecturing and then don't get students involved or participate in the session uh, there's very little things they can take away from your session. Yeah? So this is, this is the uh, essence of uh, SCL or any SCL. Yeah? Um, so in an interactive activity, so what is, what is actually uh, interactive activity? So usually it involves instructor and students um, for an interactive lecture, students with students, Students with learning materials or platform, if you want them to work collaborative, collaboratively, usually for ODL. And uh, instructor, platform, and students. This is, I think, uh, when you have a better uh, way of dealing with a few things at the same time. Yeah? And the main thing is not we give lecture to students. The main thing is that we have session with students. 
So we actually, with our lecturer and students are together in a session uh, and we do things with students in a sense, yeah? We have activities with students. All right, let's move on to the next one. Right, are you all, um, right, uh, okay, sorry. I want you to actually um, go to menti.com and enter the code Okay, if you're already on your laptop or your device, you'd see these uh, three graphs or three scenarios. Um, and let me just explain briefly what are these scenarios. So the first one, A, is that um, the attention against this uh, one-hour session. And in general, you see that this, the attention as the class starts, attention goes up a little and it peaks and it goes slowly down. So there's less attention as the uh, session progress. In the second one, in B, you see the attention is actually quite low. Students are not even activated, they're not engaged in a sense, but towards the end, it goes high. Maybe they want to go out. They want to just want to leave. They get, get, they get really um, anxious. Yeah? And the last one is where you have basically uh, attention shoots up in the initial part of the uh, lecture and then it dips down, it goes up again, dips down and so on. All right. So what I want you to do, if you can see on your device screen, is that um, you see perhaps a blue dot. Can you just, you know, drag to a session that, you know, typically describe your session with students online? ODL, and just once you drag it to A or B or C, click Submit, and we can see the results on this, on this um, screen. I can see that um, a lot of you actually already uh, expert in uh, making things interactive. Just be honest uh, in this session, because I don't know you what, who you are behind, behind the blue dot, yeah? Um, okay, all right, any more before we go on to the next one? Yeah, I've received so far, is it 13? Okay, seems that you are already quite good uh, in, in making your session interactive. Um, okay, there are more blue dots. Uh, concentrated over graph C, yeah? then A. Okay, then we can move over to the second uh, one. Okay, so to convert, so when you have a session which is, I think, a uh, little bit um, of low attention or low engagement, what approach or strategies have you used? Can you share uh, your thoughts in that? What are strategies or approach that you have used to convert from low engagement to a good high engagement? Some actually, uh, some of you say you call students' name, have short quiz in the middle of class, good, show video, fantastic. Uh, usually objective kind of question, okay. Ask question, you ask question, do you get an answer? Like uh, what we did earlier, top uh, five top five take five top five pop quiz a joke. Five pop. I don't understand the five pop uh, a joke. Okay, never mind. Just uh, refresh this again to see more uh, comments. Okay. Quizzes, yes, uh, sorry, uh, Kahoot, play quiz, breakout session, good, activities in between. Okay, you, so you're already expert. I do, honestly, you don't have to do this session at all, in a sense. Whenever I see students starting to yawn, I always tell a story. Okay, uh, either from my experience and from the news article. Fantastic. Okay, call names. Yep, that will uh, give, uh, well, uh, draw your, their attention um, very fast, isn't it? 
Okay, that's good. Yeah, you know how to uh, call for attention in a sense, uh, make them um, less sleepy. Yeah? All right, let me then share. I think we have I've shared the types of interaction just now uh, uh, earlier. Yeah, and uh, for any any um, usually ODL uh, online courses in general, yeah? ODL, BL, or uh, HL hybrid, hybrid learning. I think the best way is to use something visual because then you can uh, it can appear in the um, on the screen and there's so many ways uh, to draw the attention uh, initially. Yeah? Uh, they can have photographs, visual map. If you are a time planner, you can do that. You can also have screen captures. Um, what interesting is uh, infographics as well. And what is I think quite trendy these last few years is the sketch notes. Uh, you can do that. And I think there's some really nice um, as well uh, uh, when they, if your students actually watch you uh, draw, I think it's like a really nice way for them uh, to engage uh, with the movement of your hand and so on. I think it's really nice to have a sketch notes. Yeah? So I think, okay, this screen capture is taken from CIDL, uh, UITM. So you have done the bit whereby um, you convert the face-to-face -to, -face to teaching or lab videos for ODL. I think right now you are already uh, quite familiar with the tools, the technology, you know, you use Webex and so on. I think you're quite good in that. Yeah. And um, I think depending on the scenarios later as we're coming into the next semester, whether or not you have a uh, group of cohorts coming into um the the university onto campus you could have bl you could also have hybrid learning as well hl the difference is that uh, bl would be the same student like this student uh if the they have to actually do a hands-on uh, uh session practical for example the same student will perhaps for example the briefing can be done uh online first yeah then students come into the same student come into the uh, lab to do the practical. He may also have a shorter practical because the briefing usually has been moved out of the live session, the uh, face to face session. Then later when they do reports or discussion, they can actually have it online. So that's the PL in general. Yeah? And the percentage of the online uh, things, online which content activity is about 30 to 80 percent. Uh, for BL, if you're thinking of doing your classes uh, on this BL mode, yeah, and uh, for the HL is slightly different. Is when say the same student, you you actually have two groups of students. Those come to on campus and they join you synchronously with those staying at home. So you have the session together. And I think it's a bit tricky sometimes if you can do it, you have them working together synchronously, the face-to-face the -face and also the, um, the uh, live session, all right? So, um, okay, so let's go back to what you already know very well. Okay, the chat is gone, that's fine, good. All right, so you know, uh, you I think you already say, you already have, you know how to give a lecture, you know how to live stream and so on. You also have done videos, uh, whether it's a voice, voiceover, whether you have a video also with your yourself in as well. Uh, and usually the the idea is that uh, for a 10, 20 minutes lecture is equivalent to one hour lecture. Correct me on this, but I think that's more or less the, the idea for ODL um, or for the uh, students SLT as well. Yeah. So now when you already have your video yeah uh, and you know how well you know very well how to get lecture basically you have two options yeah the first option is you can go into this uh, mode uh, or use the strategy whereby you actually uh, use this interactive lecture technique uh, if you have a one hour lecture you chunk it into smaller pieces 10 minutes lecture, you know, 10 minutes lecture in the second second part and the third one, 10 minutes lecture. And in between, you do um, a thing per share. All right. 
uh, on online this thing pressure can be modified to um thing group share if you have been just now to the um escape room i shared a video and uh, they you know inform you how you can actually do a group grouping as well and the main thing here is if you want to more or less see the sort of correspondent uh, correspond to the to the graph um uh, any lecture i would say any session yeah you need to start with a hook then once you have a hook you gain the attention yeah you can use a visual you can use a video mm -hmm. you can use a story uh, this is very important. Then what you see is that you see the intention goes up. They really pay attention to you. Yeah? And this part is very important because you really want to get the energy up in the beginning. Yeah? You don't want to get beginning uh, up to a level and then it goes down. You really want to get the attention really high. And then you actually pose a question for them to think. And what would happen usually when you ask them to, you, you, know, you pose a question and ask them to think, there'll be a Quick, quick moment, like very quiet, you know, nothing happened, okay? So what happens behind, what happens in there, actually? Um, many, to be honest, in a large classroom, especially in a small classroom, it's, it's, it's okay, I think. People, is very, in a sense, small people know each other, but in a large classroom, you have 100 students, 180, 200 students, they don't know each other. There's always this fear of um, speaking out. Yeah. So how do you help them to speak out? You prepare them. How do you prepare them? What you do is, um, if now we're going ODL usually, what you do online is to do the breakout session. Yeah. So you earlier before the, your session, you do the uh, you know you plan your lesson, plan the the grouping. Uh, maybe you can start with Mentimeter, you can start with uh, Google Form if you want to. So then they, you, you inform them how you're going to do your session. Yeah. So at that point, say example, end of the 10th minute, what you do is you um, say, okay, I'm going to post this question and can you please go into your uh, session, breakout session, uh, discuss about it, come back in two minutes. It's going to be very short. Don't don't make it very, very long. It, it wouldn't be any, um, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be helpful if you plan to have a lecture. Yeah. So make it really like short bursts of activity. So it's quite intense, two minutes. They have to think, you have to discuss, and they have to share with each other and share on Google Form or share on a Mentimeter. Yeah. That would be, that would be one. All right. And, um, and then you, after that, you call out a few, a few uh, answers. Uh, when you get answers, it means they are already ready to give answers, you know, when they already talk with each other and so on, they are already confident, they are ready to give answers. And sometimes you actually keep doing this, you get more answers than what you want. Yeah, uh, There's less of that quick, quick moment when you they have prepared an answer. Yeah, um, So then you can move on to the next one. And for this, these things, I think, usually, you can start with something uh, on the lots, the water thinking, and you proceed to the hots. Uh, for example, second one, you can say, okay, you know, uh, I'm going to go back into your session, into your group, and then um, you can just say, all right, um, you let's uh, tell me three differences between A and B. Yeah. So that helps in a sense, they need to analyze things. They need, they, need, uh, they need to go back to your content, to what they have learned earlier, and start thinking. That is when you trigger their thinking. Yeah. All right. Um, KWL, you can honestly Google it. Um, KWL is something you can use if you want to diagnose um, how well a student know a topic. For example, K stands for no. So in the beginning of a lecture, you ask them what they know. Yeah, if they already knew about a topic, yeah, um, you don't have to spend so much on 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 introducing the topic. You can simply jump into section B and so on. You don't have to to introduce the topic. And then the second one is W. What they want to know. So they know something already, but what they want to know about the topic. What what more they want to know. So this is important. And when you do this too in the beginning, you will definitely get attention when you address 
they are want to know. Yeah, uh, you connect with them in a sense. Yeah, and um, you can give a lecture. You can use this uh, trigger en engagement trigger if you want to. And uh, as you as you go on, you can at the end you would uh, ask them to reflect. Yeah, what have you learned? Because honestly, if you give a lecture, a live stream, or face-to-face -face lecture, sometimes we just go through the lecture and comes to the end of the lecture, you said, what have I learned? Yeah. And when you use one of these techniques, you make them aware of what they have learned because they have to write down, for example, example, um, tell, write one thing or two things you have learned from my lecture. So that make them aware. Uh, uh, you know, they reflect, they have to be aware of what, what they have gained from the lecture. And that also make you aware what they have learned and perhaps what they haven't learned as well. Yeah, so it actually work both ways in a sense. Right. Um, okay, so that's, this is one technique that I, when I started off uh, exploring with the uh, instructional strategies, I used this in my large classroom. I think you can also use it for small, but I think um, on the other hand, if you have large classroom, you don't have um, the, the, actually the time to uh, you know cover ev everything, uh, everyone. Uh, so you really have to use certain techniques to help uh, your students and to help you teaching as well to get your teaching more informed. Yeah. Okay. All right. The second model is the flipped classroom model. This is when you have a lot of videos. I'm sure by now when you have done the ODL in the last one year, you have a lot of videos. So are you going to lecture uh, again and again and again? Um, the option is yours. But if I were you and I have series of videos uh, in my hard drive on Google Classroom, what I do is I move that content outside of the classroom. Yeah. And I ask questions. Ask students before the classroom to watch maybe don't give them one hour, don't give them one hour video and ask them to do that before. I think it's very tiring. Uh, and it is, I think, also doesn't help in terms of SLT. I think it's already out of SLT. Uh, it's too much, I think. What you need to do is to just edit a bit of a video, find the one is what you're going to discuss in the um, session. And uh, always, when they have watched the video, always ask them, you have any questions, please post them either as individual or maybe as a group, and then, uh, then have them together before your session, and then you can plan them. Yeah. In your session, you have you can have uh, you can address individual uh, question, or you can have you can address the group question as well, and always give feedback uh, when if you think that the question is a bit out of um, not in line with what you teach a content, for example, yeah, and yeah, try to address it as well with live lecture, uh, short ones doesn't doesn't have to be long actually because the content is already out there, okay. And at the end, you can ask them to reflect and revise uh, later, perhaps with a long video if you want to. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. And the third model is, which I love the best, is this. I think I've, uh, some of you actually have done that uh, earlier as well, giving quiz. Is the main thing here is you use technology. Yeah gamify the quiz and make sure you give feedback so create time for feedback in this case because you're going to close the loop uh, in this model so the first sub model this is model a is that you move content content can be video can be powerpoint can be pdf it can be anything so you ask them assign students before the uh, your session i suggest about a week yeah don't give it like um uh, a day before, it'll be very, again, burdensome for students, uh, at least a week, but, uh, perhaps two weeks, move the content out of the live lecture session, and then you, during the live stream, yeah, you focus on the assessment, yeah, 
um, give feedback as well on what they have done uh, earlier. Uh, you can use Kahoot. I think you already know about this. You can also use Escape Room. Yeah. Um, this is an example of the. Uh, this is face to face. Yeah. Um, then face to face, we have groupings, and from here, this is quizzes using quizzes. I can quickly quickly see which one um, they've got right, which I think there's no point of saying things and again, they already know the answer. They they are on a good, uh, you know, they, they, they're already okay. Um, the one that I need to address during the live stream, during the face-to-face -face session would be those questions that they got wrong, yeah? All right, the second model is that you do the quiz asynchronously outside the live stream, the real time. And during the live stream, you give feedback. And on quizzes, it'll give you um, a really quick way. So at the end of the, uh, the quiz, it gives you this green and um, red uh, table to see which one they got wrong and which answer, uh, with the wrong answer, you sort of have an idea what they're thinking are. Yeah? So you correct them during the live session. And um, these are my students. I did it with my students. This is actually, if you see, the years is actually four years ago. I was thinking, can the gamified online quiz replace the traditional pen and paper quiz? That was my um, thinking in a sense, yeah? And how well would they accept this idea? And to be honest, it's not well, okay? They were a bit reluctant to accept the idea. Um, some, okay, I think small members say, okay, let's do it, doctor, you know? But the rest are not, Okay, they're not okay. Uh, and uh, after a bit of negotiation, uh, in other words, they decide when they will take it. So they decide they want to take it like after dinner, around eight something in, at night, in, sorry, in, in the evening. I say, okay, fine. I have to work overtime. That's fine. That's okay. But as long as, you know, uh, they, that's the best time for them to work uh, outside, it's online. And they said they have a better stable internet during that time. Sure. So after they have taken a quiz, they said, okay, um, I received this on my Facebook and I said, doctor, can you please do the uh, anti-micro quiz, uh, my part basically, to do it again, you know? And they said, I think it's the best type of quiz. They enjoy, they enjoy the quiz. That's the thing that I was quite surprised to see. Yeah? Um, because I asked, I actually allowed them to repeat as well and they can learn from their mistakes. I think it's very important. Whenever we do, we want them to perform a certain level. Uh, I think it's best for students to have a safe environment, and also they can learn on their own pace and time, um, and also from the mistake. Yeah. Uh, even Korean came out. Kamsa Hamida Hamnida, doctor. Uh, honestly, I have to look it up. Uh, I had fun doing this, and um, uh, it's a great feeling, you know. Uh, in general, I would say, um, I was actually, I've never seen any students happy, so happy after a quiz. Um, that's a revelation for me. And that taught me that I have to design my instruction yeah, to suit the generation that I'm teaching. I think that's very important. Um, during my time as an undergrad, there was no YouTube. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think that speaks a lot, yeah? Because uh, I think now, because if they can access YouTube and MOOCs and so on, so uh, we have to be better than that so that they come to our class, be able to discuss with us as well, yeah? So that's um, my, well, my experience doing Model B, yeah? Uh, gamified uh, quiz is synchronous and then give them, can they come to my class the next time because I give feedback to, I share what they have made mistake uh, on and I give my feedback on that. Uh, and they want to improve themselves. I think that's the main thing we, we need to realize that um, if we help back, we, we actually hold back the, the answers from them, they wouldn't learn as much because it's always a guessing game uh, for them. So it's best to just let them know what the answers at the same time you, you teach them uh, how to think. Uh, as well, yeah? Okay. If you want to know further details how I conduct this um, gamified online quiz, 
uh, we published a paper in National Journal of Pharmacy late last year. So you can you can see how we you know do uh, do, do the whole thing. Yeah. All right. And also, is it time now. Okay, we are on track. Another thing that I think we need to consider is this one. Uh, this is probably more applicable for course coordinator, uh, or RP. Uh, just now we talk about the um, session level or lecture level. Yeah, what you're gonna do, uh, individual lecture we're gonna do. But now we talk about a course level, if really, especially on ODL, where they they shouldn't be static. Don't think that the students just the, the, the skills are fixed. We need to think that they will acquire skills as we go on. And I think we need to start from our own class, sure. But across the course, you can see here, this is uh, uh, put forward by Conrad and Donaldson. Um, there are different phases in an online course. Yeah? Since we're all doing ODL, um, first is now it's okay, thank you. Sorry, uh, but just now I think is my internet is a little bit um, temperamental for a short while. Uh, where did I miss? Where did I stop just now? Can you help me? You were just explaining about the phase one. Phase one, yeah? Oh, wow, that's a long time. Okay, thank you. Right, so, um, so this is actually at the cost level whereby I, I think uh, it's useful especially for a large classroom, because people don't know each other, um, to have ice-breaking session. Sometimes, even though they are together for maybe three, four years, they don't know each other at all. So I think it's our role, especially in the first week, to do a short ice-breaking session to get the students to know each other more, you know, as they, they, you know, they, they are, as they progress in the, in the um, different years as well. Okay, and I think it's also especially critical here for the newcomers. The first year, who's probably have to do ODL, they are at home, they're not here, they don't see each other, and I think it's very awkward when we expect them to work together when they haven't even talked to one another, to be honest. Yeah, if you think about it, it's really hard to work with another person if you don't you actually have met them and you don't, um, you don't trust the other person. So that icebreaking helps to help them to actually bond together better. Yeah? And in the second phase of the course, usually week three to week four, then you start to design uh, activities of, uh, for, for, for the students to, to work together. This is when the bonding is better. Yeah? So, uh, and then they can, you know, learn together how to make a mind map. They can start to receive um, peer review. Um, you can hear also, you can introduce rubrics. So they start to actually give feedback to each other and learn to improve on their work. Yeah. And as they progress onto the collaborative uh, time or session, you, this is, you start to become a facilitator. Yeah. Uh, and you start to actually also, you can start in this is the good time to start the PBL. Uh, that's, that's when they have, uh, you know, the first few weeks you have prepared them to, uh, to collaborate together. Okay. Um, and they can start having debates because then they're able to accept each other's ideas as well. Yeah? All right. And uh, the phase four is when you step out, eh? you already step out, you'll just observe, you know. And the students will now take on the leadership, take on uh, and lead discussion. You don't have to do anything because they know their role already. So I think along course, if you actually do this more or less the pro as you progress, you should be able to see the students to, in a sense, uh, know their role in other courses. You need to tell them that the skills they have learned in this course will be able to use in other courses and the next uh, few years as well. And even, even um, when they work, uh, out, out there. All right. Um, I, I've also uh, here, let me just uh, share. Oh, not this one, sorry. Uh, also in here, I've uh, also share um, different links to the um, um, some reference, references, some books as well. So have a look later. I'll, I'll share the link to this 
um, uh, my presentation later. Yeah? Uh, I'll come to the technology in a bit, but before I, before I finish off this section, I just want to share some books that I've, I've, I think uh, is quite dear to me because I learned a lot also. I learned a lot when I was a trainer uh, and I learned a lot with my, from my students. And also, as I go along, I'll refer to some uh, website and some books. And these are my favorite uh, references. The first one is Makichi's Teaching Tips. It's really good. Um, they'll teach you from A to Z how, for example, how if you have um, problem students not participating in an active learning in group and so on, you, you, they, they will uh, explain to you how you can handle those things. How can you handle the students? Yeah. The second one is a blog by Richard Felder. He's a chemical engineer professor in the States. And, uh, but he actually also blog, he also blogs a lot on teaching and learning. And he's, he's a, one of the leading uh, trainer on teaching and learning in STEM. So have a look at this, uh, his um, blog. And the third one, which I think is very relevant, is how learning works. This is really wonderful uh, reference. If you want to know what goes behind um, the, how they think, how students, why students actually behave a certain way, and how we can overcome that behavior and uh, work effectively with students. Yeah? Okay. The last, now I think about four o'clock, eh? last but not least, um, would be technology. So I, I think we can use technology sparingly. Of course, it's, I think nowadays when you actually do online learning or ODL, you may have to use technology almost every time you uh, interact with the students. There are, I think, six here or maybe a bit more that I like to share that I find quite useful. If you are teaching maths or chemistry, or you want to draw and so on, good notes is one of them. I, th I find that you can actually do really smooth uh, sketching. Um, Padlet and Wakelet, I think you're probably familiar with this. Um, good for BPL. If you like, um, you know, you have your own style. So if you like a, a forum, a threaded discussion from top to bottom, then PBL is is actually a good a good way to do uh, to to use uh, for your platform yeah? um, as a platform yeah? okay generally is this is what I've used uh, this is more content based yeah? uh, because I think this one is uh, helps in the interaction I can give generally to students and they can you know explore each of the uh, notes or points and that opens up to uh, more points or more. Uh, or make perhaps a video and so on. Yeah, uh, you can also design the escape room with Genelli, uh, and you can use it for yeah. I mentioned earlier case based studies or even PBL. Um, these are, uh, for example, Mentimeter is a poll base. Uh, you have used it earlier. I think you are also quite familiar. You can uh, something similar is Wook Lab. Yeah, um, and then the another one is at Puzzle. All right, at puzzle is quite interesting. Uh, let me just show you why it's interesting. Uh, because when you already have a lot of videos, yeah, uh, what you can do in this in this sense, you can upload, you can use, you can, okay, sorry. If you already have videos, you can put it on YouTube. You can pull the video into at puzzle and uh, set time, deadline, uh, see how much is completed. You can see the students' progress for each question and so on. But this is students' view. When they see the video, for example, on this one, uh, they play it. You can put questions. You can embed questions in the video. So each of the green ones is a question. A question can be MCQ, like this one. It can be an open-ended question. You can also do a voiceover in here as well. If you say you use somebody else's video, you can replace the, uh, the the voice in the original video with your own voice in here. So what I think is why is things useful also because this is when you can see where uh, how your students actually interact with the video, and especially good if you have a video, but don't overdo it. I think um, sometimes when you have a large classroom, we tend to say uh, get excited on using technology. We thought technology can be the answer for all, but it's not because when you have 180 students, for example, and you use Edpuzzle, you have perhaps maybe three videos like this. 
you get 180 answers times three if you have three questions. So you have a lot of things in there. And it's, it's actually, uh, in my experience, it, 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 it overwhelmed me. Yeah. Uh, so it's best to do it sparingly. Maybe you know, two, two videos, maybe three, if you feel that uh, um, you want to do a bit more, and do MCQ questions then open-ended. Yeah? It's, it's for formative assessment. It's not for um, summative assessment. Okay, and if you want them to work collaboratively in uh, PPL, for example, uh, I've done this with my students. Okay, this is um, the the first. This is not PBL. This is the first time my students use it. So you can see here. I'm sharing. There, you can see that it's actually um, like a open activity. It's quite fun. They introduce, introduce themselves. They get to know each other as well. Yeah. Um, and then the next one is a bit more a bit more uh, organized. Uh, they know, they know that this is a bit more serious, yeah? And you can see that when they give, they give uh, answers, they say they like live classes, but with recorded lecture, meaning they still want the support. They will still want to see what, um, what you have lectured upon before the session and also lecture notes as well. So they, they want something um, from this, from the live session. They still want they have to have the live interaction, yeah? And this one is probably not so much. And then again, I said to him, okay, now let's get to know each other. They start drawing and so on. So this is quite cool about uh, Jamboard. They can scribble, they can put um, different pictures and so on. And at the end, we become serious again. So that's how you, you mix things up so that they, they, they can bond with each other. They can bond with me or instructor or lecturer. And then you come to the serious uh, part and they know, they know actually. Yeah, uh, just want to share the PBL. So the PBL, five groups. You can see how they use it. This is the beginning just to set the scenarios, set the stage. Uh, show this is what they need to submit uh, whenever. This is when, because I think in the earlier session, not everyone came for the session. So I have to do uh, ice breaking a bit. And then this is the different groups. So they, you can see that they organize their thoughts, uh, one, two, three, and so on. So they can see that it's uh, quite, uh, how, how they use this Jamboard is, is quite interesting, uh, quite colorful. And I think, um, honestly, I, I, I don't know how they do it, whether they actually have a Gmeet and so on, but at least you can, you can tell that they are using uh, Jamboard to the, to the fullest. Yeah. Okay. I think... Um, just a few more slides. So uh, at the moment, perhaps we are at the provider stage and the other consumer. Um, perhaps we can start designing uh, an environment, an online environment that are conducive for the learning. And we actually serve as a facilitator when we use technology. Yeah? And they can co-create with us as well. And the focus is actually on peer learning. We have need to create activities to focus more on the peer learning, yeah? And, um, well, I hope we can come to a point whereby we challenge them and they're able to construct their own learning, their own project. They take the lead, yeah? Okay, that's the end. Let me just summarize everything beyond the four walls. You have, uh, I hope you have enjoyed the escape room uh, activity. And I've given you 10 reasons why you should produce a MOOC. Uh, to be honest, you already have the content, yeah? Uh, so why not, yeah? And I, I think what's more as well, you, when you have done that, you already have a skill uh, as a 21st century educator, and you also be able to build the skills as well. Uh, the key here is make sure you build your own uh, ecosystem for your own TNL ecosystem. You, with technology, you'll be able to do that, yeah? And um, for the interactive session, um, I've shared three models, yeah? and uh, I think we should move from content focus to students focus or student centered, a bit more interactive, make it more collaborative with students, with themselves especially, students with students, um, peer learning, uh, and we are there to as a guide uh, or and de de uh, design the environment. Yeah, so. Um, 
I'd like to leave you with this um, quote from Hemin Sunim. Uh, knowledge wants to talk, wisdom wants to listen. So as 21st century educator, we need to learn how to be effective. We need to deliver what is expected of us in a sense. At the same time, use technology to be more efficient yeah, in, in teaching and learning and have empathy. We need to put ourselves in our students' shoes during this um, uncertain times as well. So thank you very much. Um, I pass over the session to the moderator, Puan uh, Sabi Hadan. All right, so thank you so much uh, to Dr. Aisha for a very interesting session. I think we have learned so much from today's session, uh, from Dr. Aisha's experience and the journey that she has been through. Uh, we have a lot of platforms, right, that we can explore to make our teaching session more interesting. And what even important is for us to also enjoy and have fun during our uh, teaching and learning session, right? So, uh, yes. right. Uh, so we we need creativity uh, apart from the knowledge that we have, and this creativity actually we need to. Uh, I think it's <laughs> dah lama tak jadi kreatif kan dulu waktu kanak-kanak kecil kreatif lah tapi sekarang makin besar growing up I think we be bring up bring up the child in you bring, bring up, up bring up the child in you mm, it's true mm -hmm. and also thinking outside the box right um so uh, any questions that you want to ask uh, me please put yeah, them on the, any in the box from any questions from the participants for Dr. Aisha? I think I already, uh, in a sense, uh, stopped ahead of time. Um, anything that you'd like to request uh, me to show? We have some time. An app or two. Is the slide available after this? I think oh, okay. The slides. Um, I am going. I already blog on this. I'm gonna share my blog post. Sorry about that. I yes. Uh, yes, yes. I will share. I will share with you. The link. So in there, in that post, uh, blog post, I okay. I shared also the escape room and also the uh, presentation on Genali. Okay, uh, Dr. Aisha, we have one question. Uh, okay. Which was sent to me privately. <laughs> um, okay. So, so the question is, uh, since that we have, uh, we are using a lot of pre-recorded lectures, right? How to make our session more interactive? It's about that oh, language. okay. Uh. How to make it our our live session or the 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 teaching and learning session because we mostly post the pre recorded lectures beforehand. Okay. Not live session. Do you have okay. comments? Okay. So okay, so uh, if I um. Let me rephrase that if I uh, hear that correctly. Uh, so you have a lot of videos, a lot of that pre-recorded videos you in our world too. Uh, now, so what do you do with it? Yeah, do, uh, to, and make it interactive. So I suggest that um, if yeah. I can go back to my, let me just um, share my screen again. I go back to my uh, presentation. Uh, you can use, I said uh, I earlier, that. you can you just um, okay. So here, uh, I think the easiest is to perhaps do a flip classroom. So the videos that you have, you can always put it again up on GC on Google Classroom or even on LMS. Uh, but at the same time, um, I think it's a bit burdening for students to watch the entire one hour or two hour uh, pre-recorded -pre session uh, video. So what I suggest is that from that video, pick a few, a sh just take a short, uh, make a short video out of that 
and post it as a video here. So this video would be the one that you really want to focus um, on with students. You post them before your live session, and then you ask them to ask questions if you're not sure. The videos also can be uh, something that you realize they couldn't answer, perhaps the other part, couldn't answer uh, well, actually. Yeah. Uh, so post this video, a uh, short video, don't make it very long, honestly, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I think is quite good enough. Ask them to ask questions. And then in the live stream, you can have a session with them uh, to address those questions. And then you give some lectures as well. Uh, if you want to make it this, if you want to make the live live stream a bit more interactive, you uh, simply, I said earlier, um, you can uh, just uh, adopt this TPS. TPS, I think, is the easiest, the the straightforward way to to do to do to do an interactive section. Yeah, ask them to think, put them together uh, online on breakout session. They post the content. Uh, in Google Form or Mentimeter, and then they can, they can share together. Okay, uh, I don't know, am I picking up or what's the... Can you hear me? Are you okay? Yes, yes. Uh, okay, so I think um, TPS to me is, uh, is the, the easiest way to, to make an interactive activity uh, with your students. Okay, thank you, Dr. Aisha. Uh, okay, anyone else has any question for Dr. Aisha? Okay, let me then, before, if there's no question, let me just uh, give me 10 minutes to just show you how you can um, use Genially. Okay, there's no question. Eh? Let me then. If you are new, you can go to Genially and go log in with your Google um, Google uh, account, yeah. And here is I, I think it's a bit more straightforward than PowerPoint. Um, these are my previous Genially. So what I do is I can just simply go to create Genially. Genially has a number of choices here. If you say you want to do an escape room, you can go to gamification, click on that, and they have a number of escape rooms templates. Okay. It's showing. And here, if you see, if I scroll down, this is what I did. This is, I based my um, Amantani deserted, deserted island on this. Uh, so you can, of course, use this template, but let me just show you. This is premium. So I'm actually on Genially for Educator. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you there's always this um, free ones. You can use this if you want to. The one with the star, you can use this adventure, um, you know, uh, template for, this is quite nice, to be honest. Uh, for your students. Uh, the main thing about using all this is that you need to come up with a story and, a th and also a theme. That's the main thing, yeah? Uh, and you can have different mission, enter everything, yeah? Um, so in here, what it does, let me just go in here. Um, perhaps one of these. Um, okay, let, rather than doing that, I'll, I'll just show you what you can do straight away because it'll take a bit longer to, to show you this one. So if you want to do the interactivity on a presentation, let me just show you presentation. There's a lot of really cool design here. Yeah. And again, you can see that I use this one. All right. So select this one. This is free. Use the template. You can choose... You can choose all templates, but you can just say, uh, I'm going to just choose the first one and perhaps just want to show you what, okay, maybe this one. Okay, and then add. 
these are free. Eh? Um, the thing about generally is that it's web based, so you you need to be to be on a stable internet. So in here, to uh, you can change accordingly. You can change the text, yeah, and then you can write your subtitle there. You put your name and so on. So if you want to make it interactive, you can see that um, a, a text would have this uh, hand button, and also the uh, this is the animation. Uh, sometimes it has three. Uh, which is replace yeah so let's go to this one and you are you have three options uh, sorry four options whether to have a tooltip a window go to page and link the one that you actually use the most will be the tooltip and windows let's go to this what is a tooltip let me show you you can add text you can add i think these are quite general in a sense the dashboard at video, uh, sorry, uh, pic, uh, image, video, yeah? embed as well. So in here, I can bold it, make it in the middle. And then I'll go to font size, make it bigger. And I say I save it. So when I preview that, what you guys see, the students would see is, they would see, I just click over that and say hello. So that is a tool tip. Whereas for window, if I were to go to the, again to here, and I change, you don't have to do it again. You can simply just go to window. And uh, usually a window is for a larger content. So you can um, add image. I'm going to go to marginally as well. Just, uh, just take one of these. Uploading. It depends on the image size. It's a bit too big. Um, then you need time to upload and also the internet as well. Then you can resize it accordingly. Yeah. And, and then save it. So you go to preview. When you give it to your students, you share it with your students. What When they click on this, they see hello and they see the entire uh, content. So that's one way to do things, to make it more interactive um, between students and material. Um, and you can use this as well when you present it, when you want to uh, make a video uh, for your lecture, if you may want to make a short video. Um, what else? Another thing that I think would be interesting is if I were to move all this out, and I go to, I'll come to this, but I just want to show uh, an image. You can actually, uh, you know, use cutouts. You can use uh, un uh, images from Unsplash. Uh, Pixabay, these are two public domain images, so you don't have to worry about copyrights at all. Um, uh, Jiffy or Giphy, uh, so you can use this. You can also upload uh, images from your Google Drive or Dropbox, so that's quite cool. Uh, let me just see whether I can get something like from here. So you can perhaps take, uh, okay, this is cool. You can use these cutout uh, images. So now I'm going to put a YouTube uh, uh, video here. So I go to, see, I go to YouTube. Just go to a YouTube video. Do I have a YouTube video? Let me just see. Mm. Let me get a, a YouTube video. All right. And um, I can paste a link here. All right. Click. So from there, you can then um, adjust it to the, to the screen. It's not, you need to play around with it, I think, uh, as well, so that it's actually just uh, falls in within that frame. It's not, yeah, you need to fine tune that. So preview it. 
students will see the laptop and also the video we can play. Okay, so that I think that's nice. Just need to adjust the alignment a little little. Yep. All right. So uh, what else you can do? You can add text. You can add images, as mentioned earlier. There's a lot of resources, icons. They have together with generally. Yeah. Um, lots of these things. There's also the interactive elements. This is the one that if you um, you can add home button. So you click on the home button. Students can leave it in there, and students can click on this and go back to the first slide. Yeah. Um, you can also have this invisible interactivity as well. So meaning they can't see it at all. Uh, if I put this over here, and you can enter something like a tooltip and say hello, and say save it. So when I actually preview that, you can click on that. You can just you know. Um, over over that area and click hello. It can be a briefing. This can be contained into a briefing. Yeah. Um, all right. And smart block is already really nice blocks. Yeah. You can use. Things cool. Uh, insert is you want to insert audio, video, and embed. Uh, if you have an embed code, there are a number of apps here as well integrated with Genially. You can change the background. Yeah. And this is uh, instead of slides uh, in generally it's called pages. So these are page one and page two and so on. Yeah, and you can also see as a grid as well. All right, that's in general. I think um, what is generally okay. Any any question? Interesting. Okay. Yes, my presentation use I use generally for my presentation. Uh, can we join? For the next semester to see and experience it, is it possible? Uh, let's see if I have a class next semester. I still I got one, but I still need to do the uh, the overall. Uh, yeah, of course you can. Tasha, do you put your uh, face as well in your video? Uh, okay, this is a, qu a good question. Uh, Hanima, no Hanima, I think um, in the beginning I use voiceover. Um, my my videos here, if you see my ad puzzle, uh, in here, my first three videos are all voiceover. And uh, later, when I'm more comfortable showing my face, I'll, I, nowadays I'll just show my face in general. I would say about, see, if I were to do, to do 10 videos, I have maybe about seven, I'll show my face. Because I think with my face in the videos, uh, it'll be more interactive. They can see who I am, in a sense. Uh, so it's about whether you are comfortable with uh, showing your face. It's not a must, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, do you record so much typo? Okay. Do what do I record? Uh, if you want to ask, if you want to ask me, uh, you want you can unmute your mic as well. Um, Sorry, Aisha, I just do you record your face as well, actually? So yes, I just yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, I, I do later, not, not, not earlier. The first, I would say the first three years, maybe four years of my um, uh, recording, I, I don't really record my, my face, actually. Uh, I don't feel comfortable at all. Uh, but later, as I get more comfortable and I'm more confident with the camera, in front of the camera, uh, then I'll, there's no problem. But it's really I, about your comfort I, level. Actually, it was, uh, that what happened to me as well, because for my first few lectures, I didn't put my face in there. But then it, suddenly, I spoke to my sister, it's a uh, undergraduate uh, girl, I think what makes the video interesting is that please put the face of you, of you in, the, in, the, in the kind of video. So I think it's really helpful. And then she said, yes, uh, and then I start, then I start to put my, my face in the, to record my face as well. So, but then I think it's very, such a very interesting experience. It's really, I gained a lot. I learned a lot in, in this ODL, I think. 
isn't it? And I think as well, when when you you know you never know that um, your comfort level with technology, you never know what is the other end of the the receiving end, the students end, until they respond to your video, isn't it? So that that's how you, in a sense, you improve yourself, your your skills. That's yeah, that's 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 what I yeah that's what I do. I I share my voice. I have more confidence in sharing my voice when my students say, your voice is okay, doctor, sounds good. You know, that, that's how. So, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Good. If you have, uh, yeah, if you have uh, any more questions, you can always email to me, uh, Aisha at uitm.edu.ny. So thank you very much to everyone for uh, participating, for being here. And thank you to e-learning committee members. Each one of you has made this possible. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, and I hope you have learned something. And when you uh, fill out the um, feedback form, also, if you want to see more of something different, please put in a request. Yeah, that would be good. All right. So thank you, everyone, and see you hopefully second series. Hopefully, yeah. Inshallah. Okay. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Jumpa lagi. Inshallah. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Aisha, and everyone for making yeah. time. Uh, please do not forget to fill in the attendance link. Yeah, the attendance form. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you. Aisha, thank you, everyone.